Hello, my name is David Clark. I'm the Managing Director of DVC, and I'm going to be talking to you about a new feature inside of EDIUS 6. On the timeline, I've got about an hour's worth of footage, and I'm exporting it into the right kind of file for a Blu-ray disc. It's 1920 1080 footage, and you can see up here that it's going to take me about four hours to export my hour's timeline which is fairly average. I'm using a reasonably up-to-date computer. This is a 3.4 gigahertz i7 computer running Windows 7 and the latest version of EDIUS. But I'm going to use a new feature to do this. So let's cancel that. Go back, export, print a file, choose Blu-ray again, setting it for top quality, variable bitrate, and I'm ticking this little box, use hardware encoder. Off it trolls, and now you can see my hour-long timeline is going to take approximately 24 minutes, maybe even less, to knock up into a file suitable for a Blu-ray disc. How on earth have I managed to cut the encoding time quite so much? Well, that's because EDIUS 6 is using a new feature called Intel QuickSync. What is QuickSync? Well, Intel have built H.264 encoding into their latest range of processors, which are called the i7 Sandy Bridge processors. Now, these aren't the older i7s or i3s or i5s or anything else. It's the latest i7s, which have only been available for the last couple of months. You also have to be using the right type of processor and the right kind of motherboards. The sort of motherboards that let us use this stuff properly have only started to come out during June of 2011. These new i7 processors have actually got a graphics card built into them. Now, typically in a computer, you've got an Intel processor, or a CPU, which does most of the main work, and then you've got a separate graphics card, or a GPU, which is the thing that shows you the picture, your Windows picture, on a computer screen. The graphics card's normally made by people like NVIDIA or ATI. Graphics cards have been getting more and more powerful, so people have started to use them to do some of the work when editing. Now, EDIUS doesn't use the graphics card for very much. Mainly, it uses it for the range of GPU 3D transitions, or the explosions and ripples and ball wipes, and then for some add-on programs like Prodad Vitascene, and also VizTitle, which is a new animated titling program for EDIUS. And with the right kind of graphics card, VizTitle can have lots of words and images dancing across the screen, all in for high definition, without doing any rendering at all. Intel decided to build their own graphics card into these new Sandy Bridge processors so you can actually ditch the NVIDIA or the ATI card completely, thereby saving you some money. With some built-in graphics cards, you might find the, the GPU bits of EDIUS just plain don't work or crash a lot. The good news is if you use the Intel graphics card, they don't crash, they do work. However, they do work better if you use a proper NVIDIA or ATI card. I mean, for example, take a look at this timeline. We have got a glowy Vitacine effect, a fancy Viz title, and then a 3D explosion. Now at the moment I'm running this computer using a very good NVIDIA graphics card. Let's just start the stuff playing. And you can see the computer is actually managing to play back all these effects quite happily does struggle a little bit on the Vita scene. I am using full high definition footage and I have got a very nice graphics card but it still struggles but for most of it is, is just about getting through it. Bang! And now here's the same timeline but just using the Intel graphics card. And there we are, you can see it's playing it but it's really struggling just to even play back that Vita scene effect. Of course, what EDIUS does is if it can't play something back, it just plays it slower, so I'm stuttering all the way through that. Just about get through the Viz title. As long as you give it a run up, you can just get through the Viz title. And then the 3D effect on there, Ooh, bit of a struggle, and it stutters on that. It all works. It just doesn't work quite as well as if you're using the proper graphics card. Now let's export this to a Blu-ray file. Super fine, variable bitrate, and off bit trolls. And my 30 seconds or so on the timelines, it reckons it's going to take about two and a half minutes to encode. So you can see there I've 
lost some of my encoding speed because the effects are slowing it down. Let's do the same timeline, but this time with the NVIDIA graphics card turned back on again. Because it's racing through that a lot quicker than it was with just the Intel card. Of course, if you just use the Intel card, you can still render it, but it's much nicer if you don't have to render it, and much nicer if things are done faster. And you might want a nice graphics card because you're using some other program that uses it, like maybe Adobe After Effects for compositing, or a 3D program like Lightwave or Cinema 4D. So ideally, you want to have both. You want to have the Intel for the fast Blu-ray encoding, and you want to have the graphics card for the fancy graphics card effects. Okay, so why have I wobbled on for ages about NVIDIAs and ATIs when all I'm really talking about is H.264 encoding? It's because the part of the processor that does the encoding is part of the graphics card. And if you're not using the Intel graphics card, then it won't work. Now the good thing is, as long as you get the right graphics card and the right motherboard and you configure it properly, then you can actually run both at the same time. So in my system here, I've got a pretty good NVIDIA 570 graphics card, and I've also got the Intel graphics card up and running. Looking at the back of the system, you can see I've got connections for both the Intel card and the NVIDIA card. And you actually need to plug a monitor into both of these. So you have to run at least two monitors to be able to make this work. Inside of Windows, you just tell the computer to use both screens. And then you just start editing. And then when you come to export, you'll find the hardware encode box sitting there waiting for you to use. If you don't have the fancy graphics card, this stuff all works and it works in exactly the same way. All that happens is it takes longer. The whole point of getting the right motherboard and the right processor is you can knock up Blu-ray discs an awful lot faster. Now I've been coming up to file and export and making up a file just using the standard Blu-ray exporter that Eddie has comes with. But of course that's just making up a file, that's not making up a disc. Well the good news is this thing is also available if you use Edius's burn to disk option. The only difference when you've got the Intel Quick Sync in your computer is that in the settings for your video, there is a little use hardware box, which is ticked by default, which basically means it's going to use the hardware when it knocks up the final Blu-ray disc. So making up a Blu-ray disc straight off the timeline or making up a separate file are both sped up in exactly the same way. Another option that you have inside of EDIUS, which will use the Quick Sync, under the H.264 box here you can see I've got one that makes files for Blu-ray discs and another one which says H.264 slash AVC. This will basically make up MP4 files. Now with EDIUS 6.03 they've seriously expanded the range of files this plugin can do. So if I click on the export box here, for a start you can see I've got the same settings as I had in the Blu-ray exporter. There's variable bitrate, there's maximum and average bit rates. The MP4 exporter only goes up to a maximum of 19 megabits, whereas the Blu-ray one goes up to 35 megabits. Quality settings, and of course you've got the use hardware. So the quick sync speeds up making these kind of files. Again, if you don't have the right kind of processor, you can still make up these files, it just takes you longer. But I've got the right kind of processor, I can just give it a name, and I can knock up now a decent quality MP4 file. As I said, with EDIA 6.03, Grass Valley have added in some new export formats. One of these is the ability to export files in 1920-1080 at 50p. Now, a lot of people are now getting cameras that can record in this size. The problem is, what do you do with the footage when it's edited? You can make up an EDIUS project at 1920-50p. One of the new things you have in EDIUS 6 is the fact that you can go up beyond high definition, you can even type your own numbers in, but specifically you can edit quite happily at 1920-50p. But the trouble is, what do you do with the edit once it's finished? 1920-50p is not a size you're actually allowed to put on a Blu-ray disc. It's not Edius's problem. Amazingly, when they designed the Blu-ray specification, this top size of HD wasn't included. Of course, you can always make up a 1920-50i Blu-ray disc, but then you're losing some of the quality. And with previous versions of EDIUS, if you wanted to make up some kind of file that would keep the quality, there wasn't really a decent option. Well, now with 6.03, there is. You can make up an MP4 file at 1920-50p, which will keep the full quality of your original footage. And, of course, it's got a quick sync, so making up an hour of MP4 at this size is still going to be very, very fast. All our new systems at DVC are being made up with the right kind of motherboards and processors. We've started using them as soon as they were available. 
If you want to get your system upgraded, then just give us a ring and we can talk about your options. But it does make EDIUS the quickest program there is to make decent quality Blu-ray discs.